and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Bonnie. I deal with all things cruise, cruise destinations, cruise travel, cruise excursions, staying your cruise ideas, all kinds of travel related tips. Today we are talking about the embarkation process. I took a trip from Los Angeles to Hawaii and the embarkation process is huge. There's a lot of things you need to do ahead of time in order to make sure that your trip goes smooth. So I will be going over some things showing you exactly what my embarkation consisted of and how it went. Let's get started. <laughs> deal and I wanted to make sure I was getting this right. The Omicron surge was happening. I wasn't sure are we even going to go. Just two days ago when all this news came out about Omicron, whether it's going to go or be canceled or just very confusing. They prepared to go on a trip tomorrow on Princess Cruises to Hawaii. So the itinerary flip-flop. You know the embarkation process on any cruise line is can be totally different. They're big on their medallion app and everything was online. Download the medallion app and get familiar with it because it is a little bit different. You know, it looks something like this. This is your, a way to pay and also to open your door. All their things that they require from you are done on the app. So for example, all the safety contract, all those things are online ahead of time. I had some problems in the beginning of my trip. Well, I'm on terminal hold with Princess with the medallion app and my embarkation time. And it says I'm in a green lane and I'll be automatically assigned. So that was New Year's Eve, the first, the second. I had no idea. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. So I was very confused because I couldn't get a firm time on when to check in. Their website is very, very busy. They said you can use a chat feature, but it's not working. Requirements and new COVID thing protocols, maybe people are canceling or I really don't know. I had done everything online and I kept getting a, something telling me I'm in the green lane. And when I happened to travel at the New Year's, uh, we went on January 4th, it was the very first cruise back from Los Angeles to Hawaii. We were the first cruise there in, since COVID. Another thing I discovered on the Medallion app, as I was trying to figure out the green lane information, I noticed on the dining part, there was a fork and a knife on the app. So I pushed that and then it gave me a way to reserve my time. So make sure that you do that because you're gonna be happy you did. So I reserved seven o'clock for a table for two. On Princess, you are allowed to join other tables or you can have a table for two, but there were not that many tables for two because I always video the food and I don't wanna be obnoxious to the people around me and it tells you everything it is you need to do upload your profile photo add your credit card add emergency info print your luggage tags which i did like this and 24 hours in advance you need to do a safety check i guess to sh say that you're not you don't have covid we look forward to welcome you on board but before we can do that there are a few steps you and your party needs to take your health questionnaire within 40 24 hours of your vacation which i'm going to do right now your covid acceptance and vaccination attestation no later than 24 hours before you embark once you're ocean ready, which means your documents are good to go. Then there's no need to print out. Just show your digital within the app and check in. Incomplete documentation may result in a denial of boarding. Maybe it was about the beginning of November because I was going on another cruise that I was afraid I wouldn't be able to do my PCR test in time. Luckily, I have that and, and you can get your results within 15 minutes. So I have to do that soon and I'll show you. I actually have a video on that. I was in a Seattle layover and I, I attempted to do that in their airport. So check out my video on that too to understand what that's about. But still no word on my check-in time. In the meantime, I have to do this test. So on here it says we're pre-embarkation for a cruise ship, which I am a negative result. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button. That would help my channel out. My goal is a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We flew to Long Beach in the same day as the embarkation. Well, we are actually in the airport and we've made it. We made it. I have my boarding passes in hand. I'm ready to go. Um, I still couldn't get a hold of Princess last night. Where's the back? 
We're at Long Beach Airport now. It is a teeny airport, probably made in the 1950s. It is very small. There is one building to check in with no room to sit down. And then the, the baggage claim area is actually outside. It doesn't look like there's anything anywhere to eat in the Long Beach Terminal. There are plenty of hotels with restaurants and it looks like downtown Long Beach is the place to go. But with all this luggage, we don't want to, to really deal with that. So we're going to try to head out to the terminal early, check our luggage and see what happens. What is going on with my arrival time? And when I see this, sorry, has already sailed. That's kind of concerning. I always had been under the impression that Long Beach was a closer distance than LAX. Then I started to investigate. I still couldn't get through to Princess to figure out what time was I supposed to show up. Maybe I thought maybe if I talk to someone this will be more clear because everything is done on the app. So if you don't do anything on the app, you're going to be behind right off the bat. You should really try to do the app. I do have a video that shows you about travel.hawaii.gov, what you need to do. I didn't take the Princess bus to the cruise ship. I, I did an Uber, so I wanted to do this on my own. As I'm looking up an Uber, there's a Long Beach Carnival terminal for the port, and there's also a San Pedro Los Angeles International Center or something like that. I don't know which one it is. So I started to look on the app. I couldn't find information. It doesn't really tell me clearly where I'm supposed to go. I got in the Uber, and I, first I picked Carnival terminal because I thought, well, it's close to Long Beach, and this Uber driver said, no, you don't go there because it's that's just carnival cruises and I've been driving X amount of years and I know this and all this so I thought I really don't know and so I was I was driving in the Uber honestly not knowing and then I finally found some reference to the fact that Princess goes out of San Pedro which is kind of equidistance from LAX and Long Beach but Long Beach the way traffic runs and just the way things flow it's a little faster and he was correct it is San Pedro so make sure that you go to San Pedro Los Angeles Angeles, I think it's the International Center, I believe that's what it's called. But again, if you have booked through a travel agent and if you took the LAX uh, bus from the airport, you wouldn't have had to been involved with this. But this is because I booked this on my own and I wanted to make sure that I got to the right place by myself. So here I had a few things going against me. I didn't know what time to check in. I didn't even know where to go. That's a kind of a crazy way to start the trip. Not only that, the day before I was all involved with the COVID tests online, the home test I have a video on that and then the day before that it was the travel.hawaii.gov I didn't know what anything of that was so it was a little bit a rough start to say the least I, I feel I'm an experienced traveler and I can kind of figure things out it's kind of intuitive sometimes and so I'm passing this on to you to in hopes that it will help you are attempting this solo without the help of a, an agency then you might want to uh, stay tuned for the rest of my story it is a little bit intense here a lot of unhappy people because the app isn't working and people aren't getting their questions answered I'm checking in at the check-in area. To make a long story short, we arrived at the terminal and check-in was pretty easy. And then it, the big mystery was solved. And actually you don't even need to have a time. A green lane, you just get to come whenever you'd like. That was the big mystery. The green lane meant you can come anytime you want and check in. Cause that meant you've already checked in everything. You're ready to go. So there was a green lane to the right, yellow lane to the left. Please don't, sir, please don't do that. If you're going to hurt yourself, just go around. Okay. Wait, wait. And I, you've done the same thing. You'll have a chance of hurting your back, your knees. I understand. The yellow lane was for people that did not do anything online or it was partially filled out or there was some glitch or some issue with something. That was where you were going to spend a lot of time because it, it was involved. It was like being at the airport with ticketing issues. So I could see the people going that direction were hung up. For me, I walked in, went to the right, gave my, I had to take another security photo. Sound good? Yeah. 
on the app you take a security photo so they pull it up but for whatever reason I had to take another photo there I looked at my COVID test just kind of verified everything I already had my room and my luggage was checked and that kind of thing so and then we walked right on I mean the whole process of boarding probably took about 10 minutes I'm here we got in okay thanks to our uber driver he was great because he knew the area and if it wasn't for him i don't know how we would have got here we would have ended up at the port of long beach which is not where you want to go you want to go to the port of los angeles in san pedro still long beach airport still closer but it is a lot further than you would expect so that was a little intense i can't find any information online i can't get onto the chat line i can't get on the phone no one can answer so it's that kind of stuff stuff has made people a little upset here. All this anticipation thinking, well, what do I do? Well, what's it going to be like? You know, is it, am I going to have to get outside because the, you know, the time is wrong. Is some cruise companies, they want you to there at say 1030 or 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock or one o'clock and you can't come early or later. They don't want you there and you'd have to stand outside and wait. So yeah, I was, I was pretty happy that it was that easy. I, I expected more of a production. And you want to stay tuned because I will show you a lot about the ship and how that looked and what we did on that very first embarkation day. <laughs> is very easy you just go in your room actual muster station information playing on the television. You watch that and then on your medallion app it tells you where your muster station is and then you will go to that. Mine was the theater so I went there and then there's people standing there and they'll scan your little medallion circle and then that will record that you've, you've done it. So that's, that's how that works. Then I wanted to confirm my dining time. That's another thing you should do the first day you get on board is go down to the dining room, the main dining room Room, see where it is they have you you know situated do they have you at a single table do they have you in an area that you like if you've chosen a time so we are walking to the dining room and to check out if there's anything we need to do and there were a lot of people in the dining room. I was in the Da Vinci dining room. You only can have a certain amount of people in there at a certain amount of time. I did it. I really would do that ahead of walking on because if you don't, I don't know what you're gonna get. You may not get the time that you like. Say you pick a seven o'clock time and I did that. And then two of the nights I spent at specialty restaurants or say that I wanted to come earlier or later. You can do that, but it's just you always have the seven o'clock time reserved for you personally at your table with the same waiters. We had two waiters from Peru and they were great. We had Roberto and Umberto. I, I enjoyed having them and I like to get to know my waiters because they get to know you and then they get to know what you like and it's just more fun that way. You get to kind of mingle a bit. If you don't do that, then you're just pretty much like you're at a restaurant at home just going in and out of the dining room with whoever and I don't know, I, it's just not as personalized to me. So when I got to my room, I had an inside cabin and it seemed a little small to me. I'm, I'm used to, I just wanted a little more space because we didn't even have a couch in there. It was just a bed. It was adequate enough with the the shelving and the where to put your bags and that type of thing but the room itself was seemed to be small so I thought well I'm gonna go to the front desk and inquire checking to see if we can change our room but I don't think it's possible and see maybe upgrade this maybe they have some free rooms available or I don't know I didn't ever did that before I thought I'll, I'll just see what happens well, I stood in line. There were people with many problems. They, I explained, you know, I just wanted a little bit bigger of a room. I didn't necessarily want a balcony because I knew that it might be cool on the trip and I, that wasn't that that crucial, but I did want some natural light. So she said, well, let me check. And then she came back and said, yeah, the upgrade would have been a lot extra with an obstruction.
direct review. So it was to me too expensive. It wasn't worth it. So we just stayed with what we had. So they don't necessarily give you an upgrade for free. I thought maybe they would, but they didn't. Did a lot that day. I mean, I went all the way from home to Long Beach to the commotion of the figuring out where I need to go and then checking in and then going to the mustard drill and figuring out if I could get another room and then unpacking and then doing a sail away. Thank you very much ladies and gents. We've got one more song for you for now and then we'll be back on uh, an Explorers Lounge at 9 p.m. I hope this has helped. I know it's a big production to get ready for a cruise and this was a little different for me because I never did a cruise that was 100% on an app and that made it a little bit crazy especially with the fact that it wasn't explained that great and there wasn't a good way to look up things. Like I'm very resourceful but I, I had a hard time manipulating the app and getting into where I needed to go. Make sure that you tune in for my other videos. I have a this Princess Cruise. I have a top six places that I enjoyed on Grand Princess already out and I will be having more videos on the uh, actual destinations, food, the entertainment, you know, what, the, what, what a typical day at sea would be like. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying this video and would like to see more like this, please make sure you subscribe below and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And until next time.